Hello, everybody! So, everyone have a good time at opening ceremonies? Yeah! Did you all have fun going down to the vendor hall so far? Yeah! yeah. I haven't been there yet. But I know the main reason why you're here. You want to meet the designer and the stars of My Little Pony Generation 5, right? Woo. This is going to be a big panel, lots of questions, big, big stars, and, you know, I think this is actually a really big responsibility. I don't think I can do this alone. I mean, sure, I've interviewed lots of other people alone, but I really don't think I can do this alone. I think I've got a partner. Uh, Marina, what do you think? Marina? Hello, Q. Hello! Oh. <laughs> hey, Will, what are you doing here? I'm stealing your spotlights, literally, with my jackets. Never mind. Oh. Mm. Continuity. Right, so, everyone here ready to meet the voice actors? Woo! Yes. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's only appropriate that we start out with the brightest ball of sunshine for My Little Pony Gen 5. Ladies and gentlemen, Jenna Warren. Woo! She likes lots of sparkles. Ladies and gentlemen, Anna Suni. And of course, these two characters wouldn't be here without the person who actually designed them. Ladies and gentlemen, Leia Dubsey! coming to this convention. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. Yay. And because you're present, I'd like to give some presents. <gasps> oh, oh presents. 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 Oh, yes. Welcome to the bad house. That's this, so I wonder what these would be. This, this is why the inmates run the asylum here. <laughs> okay. Isn't that right, Marina? Leia Imelu. Yeah. Design projects are never easy. They're tight deadlines, lots of stress, yeah. unicorns in your sleep. Maybe? <laughs> <laughs> well, now we have the way to relieve that stress. I give you the stretchy unicorn. Oh, thank you so much. I love it. Oh my gosh, I need that. I need that. <laughs> and now, for the voice actress of a, a very hyper energetic unicorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> the embodiment and the sole representative of the unicorns. I believe that you need an army. Mm. And so I give unto you the game, Unstable Unicorns. Oh my god. Wait, I've heard of this game. This is so Okay, and I love, I love board games and all that stuff. Oh, really? Great. Says, this is build an army, betray your friends. Unicorns are now your friends. <laughs> That's so cute. Thank you. Pleasure. And for Sunny Star Scout, the leader of the Sparkle Squad. I love that. Bringer of Light. And also... Turns tidal waves into sparkles. That's right. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Not wrong. I give you the magic jar kit, which you can change into your own mood lighting. Oh my gosh! Oh wow! Thank you! Oh my goodness. Make your own color change mood lights? Okay, this will be updating every single day. <laughs> yeah. This, this will be good. The people will want to, will be able to know. Yeah, my mood very quickly. Mood. Yeah, based Excellent. on the glitter. Mine would yeah. change multiple times a day. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm like, mad. <laughs> Grr. Yeah. Uh, you can start us off silver if you want. All right. Well, we have a very wonderful opportunity here because we have both the designer and the voice actresses of these characters. And so I wonder, start with Emilou. When you're designing the character, do you envision how they're going to sound? Does that influence? Oh gosh, I kind of think think about it. Um, when I was designing the characters, we had actually um, a PDF with voice actors that they wanted to have, 
So I, I had to search for these voice actors uh, past work, uh -huh. and I had to work with that in mind. So kind of, yeah. That's uh, so interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's how it worked on, on the show. Like we, we had these big fights of, we want this type of actor, she worked on this, and so you can, you can watch. So for example, for Kimiko Glenn on the movie, um, I watched some bits of Orange is in Black, of her character in it, so I can envision who she is in the show. So, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then we move to the other side of the production. The characters are, have been designed or in the stage, they're being animated, and are, we can now have our voice actresses. When you look at a character, does something click in the head to say, this is how I think they'd sound, or an impression you get in your mind? Jenna? I mean, definitely, but at the same time, there's a lot of times where we are auditioning for things and we have no idea what the character looks like, so based off the description you get, you kind of have to imagine yourself how you think they would look or feel or act, And but when you do get a visual, it definitely helps because, you know, it, it's all encompassing. Yeah, like I had no idea what Izzy looked like when I auditioned for her. So that was exciting. I mean, I had some idea. You had yeah. some idea. You knew. <laughs> I was a little late. Past party. Yeah. 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 You saw some pictures of a character before? No. No. Never. No. Nope. We just got. Uh, I just got a character description uh -huh. of what they were kind of looking for, and then I went into the audition and gave my take on what I thought the character. That is was. so funny because yeah. the movie was out we before. Were, no. 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 Yeah, this is a big misconception. Oh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, we were cast. We, I was, I was cast before the movie came out. Yeah. So. No way. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then I was brought on after. So there was like, yeah. Okay. The, yeah. So yeah. So that actually, there's that. <laughs> so that actually brings up our next question. Uh, what was the process of actually assuming these roles from the movie? Since it seems like it was actually very complicated, actually. <laughs> Sorry, could you repeat the question? Uh, what was it like to actually assume the roles of Izzy and Sunny uh, from the movie? Because it seems like it was actually a very complicated process with you being cast before and you being cast after. Yeah, well, you know what? They did an amazing job because I feel like they took the essence of who the characters were and they found matches. Um, and it, it worked out, I thought, really great. Like, I feel like everyone sounds awesome. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was... It, do you have any thoughts on that, Jenna? I mean, yeah, because when I was doing my audition process, was, which was months after um, Anna, the movie came out. So I was drawing a lot of inspiration from Vanessa because I was like, oh my gosh, am I like, <laughs> I'm, I'm Vanessa Hunter? Like, whoa, well, what's going on here? So I definitely, with my take on my audition process, I definitely took a lot of inspiration from her. And then as the audition process kind of went on, they kind of liked my own voice a little bit more than how I was sort of really trying to emulate Vanessa. So it was like sort of a process of, here, let's try this, let's try this. And then we came to sort of the sound of Sunny. Um, but yeah, I definitely was really intimidated at first, having an another voice already established and out there. Um, and then coming on and being like, hey, so it's me now. <laughs> it, was, it was interesting. You know, I think you just gave a, a prompt to all the musicians in the fandom, the sound of Sunny. Can we get that big? Hello, Sunny, my old friend. <laughs> oh, wow. That must... Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, and like, you know, watching Kimiko, I was like, oh my gosh, she's so amazing. Slay. She's so very good. Um, yeah, so it was, it, I felt really honored to, to be taking, uh, you know, taking part as Izzy and kind of taking her character and, and shifting it and making it a little bit my own, but also taking some of her essence. So it's, it's been an awesome journey. Yeah, I believe it, but also every journey seems to have a beginning somewhere. So question for all three of you on the panel, what was your first, ex what was your first experience with the My Little Pony franchise? Starts me, yes. All right, well, me, but was G4. Well, no, I watched the show when I was a kid the G2 show or the G3, I don't quite remember, but I was playing with the toys. But I've been a brownie since 2011, actually. So, oh, yeah. so that was well, that the, the first episode I watched of G4 was uh, Pinkie Pie with Zekora, the Zekora one. 
and, and, and I fell in love with Pinkie Pie <laughs> in this instantly. Yeah. And you? Um, my first experience was, well, I was working on something and I had heard of the voice actress Andrea Lippmann. And uh, I just looked her up and I saw she was part of My Little Pony and I watched a couple episodes. So I was in for G4 and I watched a few episodes of that. That was my kind of first experience of watching My Little Pony. She's so awesome. <laughs> oh, and she does like both the characters and they're so uniquely different. Yep. She's such a talent. And <laughs> she's here. So. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Um, my first experience, I watched the show when I was younger, and my mom's a kindergarten teacher, and so she had some, like, My Little Pony figurines that I would play with, um, and then when I got the audition, um, for Sunny, I was staying with my baby cousins in Vancouver, and I was like, hey, you want to watch, uh, My Little Pony and Your Generation? She thought I was the coolest cousin ever. <laughs> we watched it, like, three times that weekend nice. as I was preparing, um, and so then that's when I sort of got reintroduced uh, to this, to this world. Nice. So, yeah, my little pony making cousins cool. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Isn't that right? Isn't that right, Marina? <laughs> she agrees. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I have a, just some individual questions, and then I think we'll open up to general questions from the floor. Absolutely, sounds good to me. Jen, on top of uh, what I like to call human malware from 2020 on now. That's always been a uh, burden on your shoes, but you also manage that and you have uh, type 1 diabetes. Yeah. How does that play into your career and what advice might you have for, for people who want to, well, become voice actors but also worry may have to face diabetes? Yeah, definitely. Well, I was first diagnosed with diabetes when I was 16 years old. Um, and ever since that, the first thing I said to my dad when I was diagnosed, well, was, well, it's a good thing I'm always up for a challenge, so that's always how I sort of looked at it. It's just a part of who I am, just like how some people have glasses or some people have long hair. It's just a part of me. It's not who I am. Um, and I'm a very, very dedicated, passionate person with everything I do. And just because I got diabetes, that didn't mean that I was going to stop anything that I was doing. It wasn't, I was not going to let it hold me back at all. If anything, it pushed me further to prove that, you know what, I can still do this and I'm going to do it better now. And honestly, it's sort of, you know, it, it's, it's a blessing and a curse because, you know, um, I have a really wonderful um, community surrounding me. Like the, the diabetes community is wonderful. Um, and also it keeps me very like in line, like, I have goals and I want to reach them and I have to be on top of, you know, my glucose levels to make sure that happens. Um, and so my advice to people, you know, if you have a chronic illness or a disease, still do everything that you want to do. Like, it, it shouldn't, I mean, there's challenges with that, of course, but don't let it stop you from doing what you wanted to do before you were, before you were diagnosed. You can still do everything and you're kind of a superhero afterwards. You're a part of not one, but two sketch comedy troops. Oh my gosh! Have either of them tried to claim you now that you're a magical pastel horse? Oh my goodness. That was sketch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you did your research. Wow. Um, wow. Okay, so I had joined these two sketch troops years ago uh, through my actors' union. I just decided to. This was before TikTok, okay? And we would create these one minute ridiculous sketches that, you know, actually, we actually got, got some interest from some pretty big uh, companies, which was really cool. But, uh, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, part of it is if any have tried to claim you, but uh, oh, did, that ex did their exper the experience of those troops help with figuring out how to portray Izzy? Yeah, totally. Because uh, sketch comedy is improv. And I put a lot of improv into it. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put a lot of improv into Izzy. Um, and I think that definitely helped with that. But um, yeah, those sketch troops, honestly, okay, I'll, okay one of them I wrote, 
<laughs> Word to your mother is what it's called. And um, they're such goofy little things, but they were a blast. And honestly, I would do I, I would do like seasons and seasons of that because when you're when you're up on stage and you're just free improvising comedy, there's nothing more delightful. Than that like it just it feels freeing it feels like I could just be myself my goofy weirdness and nothing's judged until it's online and then you're like oh god <laughs> but <laughs> um I love it I, I can't believe we're bringing up that that's crazy I'm gonna I'm gonna message my friend Sydney she's the other part of it well, <laughs> she's gonna be like oh <laughs> is there any place we can see these sketches yeah they're on YouTube they're on YouTube. They have like five views, but it's oh. cool. uh, We can fix that. <laughs> we can fix that very quickly. Yep. They literally have like ten views. They're ridiculous, guys. They're ridiculous. What, what's the YouTube channel, funny? Word to your mother. Word, Word to your mother. Your mother's a saint. Word to no. I mean, I... <laughs> All right, everyone, spread the word. We need to build, we need to make this YouTube channel explode. Here's a, <laughs> spread the word to your mother. Oh, God. <laughs> check, check, the, uh, check the channel in about three hours. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no, no. He's going to have a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Over here? So, show of hands, who's already starting to share the YouTube oh. channel right now? <laughs> <laughs> What happened? Goofy. This was before TikTok. Oh, okay. It was before yeah, TikTok. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just relax. We're bronies. Ain't nothing more cringe than us. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That's right. Yeah. Uh, Leia, Emily. Yes. I had the, the great pleasure of talking with you when BabsCon could only do an online uh, uh, online stream interview. Yeah. And we, at the time, there were things you couldn't talk about because the movie hadn't even premiered yet. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So, was there any anecdotes, ideas, or, or stories you wanted to tell that you just couldn't before the movie, and uh, they, oh, you've been yeah. holding in? I know you held the secret you were working on this project yeah. for like seven years. Yeah, uh, no, not seven years. Seven, so, well. It was, I started working on G5 in 2017. So May 2017, and uh, yeah, I had to keep my, my mouth shut for like oh. five years. Oh God. <laughs> but um, uh, at that time, uh, what I couldn't tell, but is no, but nobody, everybody knows now, <laughs> but we were supposed to make uh, a sequel of the first My Little Pony G4 movie at first. Oh. And mm. then there was the another project but this project turned to be a G5 project, and then this G5 project was the main six, but they were different. And uh, so Pinkie Pie was a Pegasus, Fedorshay uh, uh, was a unicorn, uh, Twilight Sparkle was a half, an half pony, and they moved this project to the G5 actual project. <laughs> so there was a lot of changes that was made, and. Uh, but I couldn't tell at that time because uh, I was I didn't know if it was able to to, mm -hmm. to say. But um, in the end, uh, my colleagues put some concept arts about it, and uh, I put mine, and people were freaking out online <laughs> because I put the, the G for the G five G four version. Mm. And uh, but no, not everybody knows this secret, so it doesn't feel like a secret anymore, you know. <laughs> Um, what, what else? I think that's it. I don't quite remember what we were talking about during this interview, actually. <laughs> well, uh, it's, been, it's been two years. It's been two years. There's been a lot of life. Already, already a lot years. of life. Oh my god. Especially these last two years. Yeah. Hey, huh. And yet at like, the same time, it seems that these last two years have kind of stood still. Yeah, like, I feel like I, I did a jump in time. <laughs> Like, like we're, we're bringing on big mood here, guys. Hello, Sunny, my old friend. <laughs> I've come to watch your show again. <laughs> Still counting on you, fan musicians. So, uh, I think now's a great time to open things up to the audience. I believe it is, indeed. So, if everyone here who has any questions, uh, could you please line up in the center aisle, please? And I'll be right down to take them. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. I love you, too. As I understand, this is your second convention, your first, your second, oh my god, I got mixed up, my bad. Oh, second as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. 
How are you having fun so far? Yeah. Excellent. Oh my god, cons are the best. Alright. Yeah. So much fun. Alright, you're, you're after our own hearts here. Hi. Uh, so, first of all, I just wanted to thank Jenna for her uh, words about uh, chronic illness and encouragement. So, thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, my question is for all three of you. Uh, as our Griffin friend said, uh, nobody does cringe better than Bruni. So we're cringe and we're free. But uh, so I would like to know what is your uh, personal, what's your cringiest or nerviest or geekiest <laughs> interest that you have outside of poetry? Oh gosh. <laughs> I have too many. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin. What's your guilty pleasure? Oh gosh. <laughs> Should I go first? Yeah, I already know. <laughs> I play League of Legends. Oh, no way. Every day for at least two hours. <laughs> Every day. It's the first thing I do when I wake up. And it's the last thing I do before I go to bed. That's the cringiest thing I ever heard. It is. It is. I've been playing since the beta. Whoa. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. That's my thing. <laughs> I feel like I do so many things, but I can't like think of it on the spot. Um, it's not cringy, but like my guilty pleasure. It's not even a guilty pleasure because I'm not ashamed. I love like old Disney cartoons Woo! and Disney Woo! movies. Like, yeah, like I'm not that old. I don't know. Like, I love Kim Possible and Phineas and Ferb, and like I don't know. I just yeah, Sunday cartoons are every morning. I, I yeah, I love Disney. Cartoons are the kids best. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Exactly. You got me. Exactly. I have so many myself. <laughs> First of all, I'm a furry. Woo! I've been a furry before being a pony, actually. Wow. But um, I like I like wolves. I like draw, drawing wolves. I was part of a wolf fandom. Wow. Ten years ago. Wow. <laughs> uh, I do play cringy game as well. Like I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Counter Strike. Heck yeah, oh. Counter Strike, dude. I, I do play Counter Strike a lot, a lot, and Fall Guys as well. Fall Guys. I like these kind of games, and I'm a big anime fan. Uh, my favorite anime. I, I've been watching this anime like 20 times. Uh, it's been Card Captor. Oh my god! I love Card Captor. I love Cat Cat uh, Dog. My, my cat so is good. named. My cat name is Shaolan because of Cat Cat. So oh. good, so good. I love Naruto. Oh my god. Yes. yes. Mm. I, oh I, my love, I love. I love shoujo. I love shoujo anime. Oran is full of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oran oh is my. I'm, when I was a teenager, my cute bando was Tamaki. Oh. <laughs> Death Note, One Piece. Oh gosh, just Yay. so good. Oh yeah, that's a big thing. Thank, thank you very much. That was Welcome. a great question. Thank you. Now I just want to go home and play League. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. I'm obsessed, you guys. <laughs> this convention is not sponsored by League of Legends or Counter Strike. <laughs> However, if they be open, yeah, the for real. Oh, open everything. You got a look? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Trying to fall on me. So I got two quick questions for, for both of you. Do you do the singing for the characters? Yes. Yes, we did. Okay, so Verona, what was it like singing what amounted to a love song to Trash? T-R-S does it mean its ways. I love this story. I received the email, the demo. And I was, you know, after a game of League, I was... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a problem. I actually am obsessed. Um, okay, so I, I opened it up, and I was like, okay, let's see it. See that it's called For the Love of Trash. I'm like, okay. Listen to the song, I'm like, wow, okay. We're going all out. Um, but my sister, she was upstairs. She comes downstairs, she goes, this is bumping. <laughs> she goes, what is this? Because it has a like Gwen Stefani vibe to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I'm like, yeah, it's really great. Listen to the music, like listen to the lyrics. She goes, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. But going in for the second,
session was amazing. Like, oh my gosh. Aaron and Jesse, they're so they're talented. talented. They're amazing. They lead our, our music sessions. And they were just like, yeah, channel Gwen, go wild. Okay, we're gonna go for like a more dramatic version. Okay, now let's do a subtle version. Let's do a screamo version. <laughs> they let me go all out with Izzy. Like they don't, yeah, yeah. I do screamo, like I do. How does it sound? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it's intense. Um, yeah, we do all of it, and then they, they mix and match, and they find what works for the song, but mm. it was such a, such a great song. Oh my <laughs> no, gosh. Really. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So I really love board games, but at, um, at Winnie City, Jen and I, um, managed to confirm that there is a time and a place for video games, and then there are other times. <laughs> yes. But uh, what I have a question for you is, what, if any, board games, card games, more physical or improv or whatever kind of games that are not video games? Are Twister. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's nice. For all of us? Yeah, all of us. Oh! Oh, there are lots. I love board games. I do as so. well. Pandemic? It's very Woo! I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that that was a scarring game. Um, no, but that was really fun. That was a great one. Um, Exploding Kittens. Ooh. Oh, I love that one. Such a good one. Um, oh my gosh, Avalon. Uh, no? Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, Avalon. Avalon's awesome. Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know if it's a bold game. But lately, it's been like six months, I am obsessed with Mahjong. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah! Richie Mahjong, the Japanese version, I play every day. <laughs> 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 but uh, Exploding Kittens, uh, do you know the, the game Bang? The cowboy game? No. Maybe that's a French one, actually. I have yeah. um, oh, yeah, seen it. Uh, I love Uno, but oh, no, yes. I, have, I have a pony version of a Uno. Oh, yeah, 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 I do. Uh, it's my favorite. How did you get that? That's so cool. In a convention, someone gave it to me. I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, but Mahjong, I love Mahjong. Cool. <laughs> thank I'm gonna you. play Mahjong right now. I think we have <laughs> <So, laughs> so, right, seriously introduced these three to Prance. Um, <laughs> let's make that a goal for this convention. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Code names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, hi. Hi. I hope you guys are doing okay today. Um, I just, I, I hope this question made sense, but if you draw any inspiration from um, the generation of board characters, I asked this because I know it's like Izzy has a lot in common with Pinkie Pie in terms of energy, optimism, right. spontaneity. So, um, uh, I was just wondering how much, like, did, did you draw, did you want to channel some of Pinky's energy into the character? And I, the same can go for China, like, did you draw any, uh, did you get any inspiration from any Generation 4 characters for a second character? Okay. That's, That's a great question. Thank you. Um, first of all, Pinkie Pie is so much fun. Yeah. Like, she's just so wild and crazy. She's my baby. She's yeah, good. she's so cute and fun. Um, Izzy, definitely, there are aspects I think you can, they're very comparable. Well, they I designed Izzy to, as if it was a bit of Pinkie Pie. So. There we go! <laughs> so there we go. And, you know, reading the prompts, the, you know, the casting, the high energy, the bubbliness, the hyperactive. How could you not think of Pinkie Pie? You know? So those were aspects aspects were there. But there are different aspects that Izzy has. She's very creative. She loves to craft. She has like a a, a newness about the world. She does it. She wants to explore the world. She wants to make a ton of friends. Um, she's never had close friends before. So those nuances that kind of shies her away from Pinky, 
making her Izzy, you know? Yeah. But definitely, definitely, you know, I keep reading the prompts, I'm like, okay, I can, I can feel some of Pinky here, but how do we make it our own, you know? I wasn't trying to say that, like, it's, no, no, it's no. just a carbon copy of it. Yeah. No, I, I just meant, like, inspiration. Yeah, exactly, and yes, you're, the, the answer to your question is for sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure, yeah. Um, China, but... Yeah. For myself, um, since Sunny was already sort of out there when I did my audition process, I definitely drew inspiration from how Vanessa did her take. But then also Twilight Sparkle, her, her leadership quality, I really wanted to embody that with Sunny as well. Also keeping in mind of how this is a different, she's different. I didn't want anything to be the same or think that I'm copying anything, you know, because this is a brand new, that's something that I really wanted to make sure is like. Book, 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 war. Pardon? Not quite as much as book war. Yeah, that's right. No. Yeah, she, yeah, more of a smoothie girl, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but definitely like leadership qualities, making sure that everyone feels welcome and always wanting to like extend the olive branch to make new friends. I think yeah. those are like very important qualities, but then also like, you know, her dorkiness and like <laughs> who Sunny is. So it's like the same as Anna, like definitely drew some inspiration, but also there's like a fine line that I, I didn't want to, to cross. Right. Yeah. yeah. I thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you for the you. question. I, thank you. Uh, my question is for Anna. Hi. So when you did your small little part at the end of G4, did you just say, oh. I'm going to come back next time and I'm going to be a main character? <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. Oh my gosh. That character. Oh my gosh. That character is so cute. Yeah, that was such a, I don't, that was just such a coincidence. Like I got cast as her and then it was like, oh my gosh, what, why can't I, what? <coughs> I'm just trying to recall how it all happened. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like a year before I got cast in, in G5. <laughs> That's right. But that was really cool. Like I just got to do a little one-off part in that and then she was in and out and then I got an audition for G5 like about six or seven months later. And it was, it, it just happened. Hey, I've seen this before. Oh, well. Sorry? Hey, I've seen this before. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I was like, oh yeah, I, I know this, I know this show. I've heard of this one before. Wait, wait who's is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Hello, this is uh, Anna and uh, Jenna. Hi. Yeah, so do you two uh, prep, like when you guys voice your characters, do you two prep yourself before you do it or do you just go for it? Can you, sorry, can you repeat the question? When you voice your characters, do you two need to prep yourself or do you just go for it? Oh, good question. Um, I definitely read the scripts before I go into the session, you know, to make sure I'm hitting the marks. Um, but then a lot of it is also like improv. Yeah. Like we bounce off of each other. I record with AJ a lot, who plays Pip. So we have a lot of fun in that sense. Um, but yeah, there's definitely like preparation.